With us now with more on the latest security updates is Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs Research Fellow and Journalist Yoni Ben Menachem. Thank you for joining us, Yoni. You're welcome. So two remote controlled bombs at bus stops. This seems likely to be the work of a terror cell rather than a lone wolf. Where is believed the group is based in and how are they connected? Are they connected to one of the terror organizations, Hamas or uh, Islamic Jihad? Uh, it seems like a very organized uh, terror group which is uh, associated or operated by uh, maybe one of the uh, terrorist organizations in Gaza Strip, either the Hamas or the Islamic uh, Jihad. There's also a possibility that uh, uh, this group belongs to ISIS or even the Popular Front. All these organizations that I mentioned are, have experienced in uh, um, exploding or donating bombs uh, uh, with remote control. Uh, this is what happened uh, yesterday when the uh, charges were operated uh, by a cellular phone. Uh, and uh, now the Israeli Shinbet, the Shabak, and the Israeli police are trying uh, to uh, get to the people who uh, carried out these uh, two attacks. Uh, there, were, there is a um, police activity in uh, East Jerusalem itself, in some of the neighborhoods, and also uh, in the villages north of Jerusalem, like uh, Bet Iksa, uh, where the suspicion is that uh, uh, maybe some of the residents uh, there are involved in the attacks. We saw celebrations in different places in Israel, I mean also in Gaza. How come no one took responsibility yet? Uh, they don't want to take responsibility because uh, they don't want to be exposed to uh, international pressure or to Israeli retaliation. Uh, if the, one of the terrorist organizations will claim responsibility, it's only a matter of time till uh, Israel will retaliate and uh, attack uh, targets of this organization in Gaza. So this is why they are keeping quiet. Just today, uh, the security services announced the arrest of a Gaza man with an Israeli work permit for plotting uh, to a bus bomb in the south. What more can the security services do currently to curb the current uh, terrorist threat? It's uh, obvious that uh, the center of the terrorism is in Gaza Strip, uh, where all the uh, uh, terrorist organizations, especially Hamas and Islamic Jihad, are trying to recruit Palestinians from the West Bank and also uh, the Palestinian uh, workers from Gaza who work in Israel, and this is what happened. Uh, they train them and they give them orders to carry out terror attacks. What is alarming is that uh, apparently Hamas is returning to the uh, um, uh, method of uh, putting bombs in uh, buses, in restaurants, in public places. Uh, and this can be an indication that maybe Hamas is involved in the terror attacks in Jerusalem. Now, changing uh, direction to the kidnapping of a critically wounded Druze teen, Tiran Farah, who died after being snatched from the hospital in Janine by a terrorist gang. Thankfully, after a day, the body has been returned. What were the major factors in securing his uh, release? A little bit about the negotiations. Well, uh, just uh, a while ago, uh, the Palestinian Authority uh, through its uh, news agency, Wafa, they uh, um, uh, issued a statement saying that uh, the release of, of the body uh, of uh, Tiran Ferro was done thanks to, thanks to the efforts of uh, the uh, PA chairman uh, Abu Mazen and the head of the Palestinian security, Majid Faraj. So they want to take the credit for the release uh, uh, of this uh, body, but actually I think that uh, the, the armed terrorists who kidnapped the body, uh, they were, were afraid uh, from the retaliation of the Israeli army uh, that uh, will go into Jenin and, and rescue the, the body by force, and also uh, they were afraid of the retaliation of the, the Jewish com uh, community who uh, threatened also some elements in the Jewish community uh, uh, also threaten to take revenge if they don't return the body, and I think this is the pressure that finally uh, made them uh, return the body. 
So, Yoni, about that community, the Druze community is Arabic-speaking and very loyal uh, to the state of Israel. If necessary, would the Israeli army have risked the lives of soldiers to retrieve the body? I mean, we know uh, stories like Koron Shaul and Adar Goldin. What's different here? The difference is uh, here that uh, in Jenin is uh, surrounded by uh, roadblocks of the Israeli army, and the army can uh, impose closure and, and go in and bring the body. In, in Gaza, it's a different uh, situation. Uh, there is a border, and uh, it's, a, it's a large terrain, and uh, there are a lot of... Uh, 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 hostile forces, but uh, still, no Hamas, one, Jihad. no one had to go in. So, I mean, they he they brought him back. Yes, they brought him back because uh, it was uh, only a matter of time they wouldn't bring him back. That the IDF would go in and uh, uh, bring the body by force, and uh, apparently the Palestinian Authority did, didn't want uh, this escalation, and they uh, put the pressure. Uh, on the on this terrorist group to uh, return the body, and this is what finally happened. Yoni Ben Menachem, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome.